Hi everybody, today I'm here with one fighter, Tan Lee. Tan, thanks for your time. It is a pleasure to talk with you. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, how are you, Tan? I'm doing great. Uh, training and uh, recovering right now in between training sessions and then uh, back at it in an hour or so. Uh, you are, right now you are in uh, Louisiana, it's right? Correct. Uh, how is the situation over there? You know, things are going well. I think uh, at the beginning, uh, people were a little more laxed on wearing masks and staying inside. And uh, we, we definitely had our numbers spike for a little while. But I think uh, everybody's getting on board with, you know, continuing to take their proper precautions. And uh, I think uh, everything's doing much better now. Uh, Tan, can you tell us uh, uh, what you think about uh, the COVID-19 emergency and how your daily life and your workouts have changed? It's, um, you know, it's definitely affected all of us in, uh, in many ways. I think um, I've come out on the better end of things. Um, you know, we've been lucky and blessed that my training schedule hasn't changed too much. Um, still... I really haven't missed a day as far as training goes, continuing to train with my inner circle, uh, my brother who's a coach and a main training partner and a good friend of mine who's basically another brother. Um, he has also, um, you know, we, we see each other on a daily basis and, and visit with each other on a daily basis. So we continue to train. I've been lucky enough to have training partners that are close to the family um, and part of the family that I haven't really had to um, endanger you know anybody any other training partners things like that so everything's been relatively safe and close-knit and uh training with a, a small group of guys that that have decided to continue training um the the downside is i haven't been able to travel and train uh train with my training partners outside of my state um been you know i haven't been able to, to visit some of the other gyms that i usually do so that's a little bit um not, honestly inconvenient but you know, during all of this time and, and such a, a big ordeal going on and such a big pandemic going on, I, I can't complain much. You know, uh, we've tried to think, keep things as regular as possible. Uh, Tan, how did you start uh, your passion for the MMA? I'm sorry, say that again. How did you start uh, your passion for uh, the MMA? Oh, how did I start uh, as far as like developing a passion for it? Um, so I've done martial arts my entire life. Um, my father did Taekwondo growing up. He has a school here in Metairie, Louisiana. Um, so I've been a part of that ever since I was a child. Um, it, it's been a family thing. My, my mother uh, trained. My brother obviously trains and coaches me now. Um, so it's been, um, it's been really easy and it's been really fun, but it's always been a huge part of our lives. And um, growing up, you know, competing, um, traveling and training with different families, uh, with my family, with close friends. It's, it's just been a part of, you know, our life, just like um, kids grow up in, in our town and play football and, and play football with the same group of kids and baseball uh, as they grow up and get older and, and, and travel and things like that. We've done the same just with martial arts. So it's, it's, uh, it's been very, very nice to, to be able to continue that um, as an adult. And, um, you know, the, the story is interesting how I got into MMA is a buddy of mine and my family went to go watch some local MMA fights. And uh, we thought it'd be fun to try it out. And we ended up trying it out, uh, scheduling a fight with no training besides Taekwondo training. So we, we went to an MMA gym to try to prepare, but it was only a couple months of training. So it wasn't the smartest thing, but it was very... Uh, uh, kind of by the seat of our pants, but it was a start to a great thing and it ended up turning out to a great career and martial arts has brought so much to my life. So um, I'm glad it played out that way. Uh, you are a BJJ brown belt under Ryan Hall and a black belt uh, on the Taekwondo. It's right. Correct. Uh, how important are these uh, two disciplines to you? Um, so, so, that's, it's my entire life, you know. Um, those two specific arts are very important to me, obviously, because of uh, the way I fight. Um, Taekwondo has pretty much taught me how to learn martial arts, and I feel like that's um, a big part of why I've been able to pick up 
other aspects of mixed martial arts and uh, been able to incorporate that into my other striking, my clinch work, my wrestling, my jiu-jitsu. So um, it's, it's been really nice to be able to learn from great minds in other arts and be able to, to try to contribute as much as I can, but really mold those things together and uh, make me into the, the, to the mixed martial artist I am today. Hey, Tan, you participated uh, in the show The Ultimate Fighter Season 22 and uh, the contender, Dana White Contender Series uh, Season 1. Can you tell us about uh, this uh, experience uh, with the USC? Um, the experiences were great. Um, you know, it was, uh, The Ultimate Fighter was my first um, real exposure to uh, UFC level fighters and coaches and facilities and things like that. And that was a great um, eye opener, you know, uh, being able to go to the world stage like that, train with uh, some great fighters, some great minds, learn from all of these different guys. Um, that was huge. You know, it it showed me that I do belong here. I do belong training and competing with the best, but um, also gave me some great, great insight on how they did things and how they approached the game and how. I could either take pieces of that and use it for my development um, or take pieces and, and throw it out and start to change the way they did things, start to change the way I did things and kind of come to my own, uh, my own final product, you know. Uh, right now, uh, Tan, you are a fighter of one of the most uh, important promotions in the world, One. How did your journey with them start? Um, so I, um, I was fighting for LFA at the time. Um, before that, I fought, just like you said, for the Contender Series um, and ended up speaking with um, one of the matchmakers. They reached out to me and, and um, we ended up connecting, um, signing with them, which I was extremely excited about for them to give me an opportunity. And, uh, you know, my first fight was in Indonesia, in Jakarta, and uh, that was against Yusuf Sajulayev. And that fight it ended up um, going well. It was, uh, I think, a few seconds into the second round, I ended up getting a, a knockout. So um, my experience so far, three fights, three knockouts. Um, my experience from the beginning has been excellent with one. Uh, I love the way they approach uh, martial arts as a promotion, how they treat their fighters, um, and the things they do you know, on social media and in the world to try to promote the right message as far as getting people into martial arts and, you know, really, really focusing on the respect, the honor and, and the work ethic of uh, becoming a great mix, mixed martial artist. You have uh, three wins in a row right now in one. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, any by knockout, knock uh, knockout, uh, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Tan, what do you think about this promotion and how do you feel with them? Um, I'm, I'm so very uh, blessed, excited, and privileged to be a part of that group. Uh, that organization, um, I think they do things the right way. You know, they do a great job of promoting their fighters. They do a great job of promoting their fights. Their events are top-notch. Um, the, the, I don't want to say the, the pageantry or the, the, the showing, showmanship of the, the entrances and the The uh, opening ceremonies and things like that are, are wonderful to be a part of. So uh, being able to travel to that side of the world, I've, I've never been to that besides for my fights. So being able to have little adventures for every fight has, uh, has been a great uh, privilege. Uh, Tan, you have a professional record of uh, 11 wins and two losses. Uh, what was your uh, best moment and what was the most difficult of your career? Um, that might be, that might be the same, uh, the same fight. I, uh, one of my, I think it was my fifth pro fight. I ended up getting my jaw shattered in a, in a fight and it was broken in two places. So it ended up breaking down the middle and over here on the hinge and it rolled in. And, um, I, I thought I lost all my teeth, but it come to find out my jaw had rolled in. And, uh, so that was completely messed up. And, um, You know, when things like that happen in a fight, you really find out if you really want to be there or if maybe this job's not for you. You know, it, it took my fifth pro fight to kind of test that out. But um, 
I got hit. I broke the jaw. You know, my jaw was broken and ended up knocking the guy out right after. So, um, but more importantly, not not what happened after the knock, the uh, broken jaw, but what happened in my head proved to me that, you know, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I want to do. This is my passion. Um, and I'll make a life out of being a fighter and what comes from being a fighter and being able to pass on martial arts to, to all the students that, that I'm attaining. So um, I think both of those moments are kind of the same fight. Really, that was the best and the worst moment. Um, but it proved to me that I'm doing the right thing and I'm on the right path. Uh, you came from uh, three wins uh, in a row before the limit, uh, all by knockout. Uh, do you believe uh, in a chance for the title? Yeah, so um, Martin, the champion in the featherweight division now, for one, has, uh, has mentioned that we signed a contract to fight before the COVID-19 stuff has gone on. Um, so as soon as one starts to bring their fighters internationally again and allow everybody to, uh, to travel internationally and train and prepare to fight. Um, that'll, be, that'll be what's next in line. So I'm very excited to face a great champion in Martin and um, do my best to, to take that belt from him. Uh, would you like uh, to face someone from uh, other promotion? How did Bellator MA and Rising uh, do it? I think um, eventually, you know, that's, uh, that's something on my plan to try to get together and promote. Um, obviously, you know, I can't look past Martin. Um, he's the, the king over there in the featherweight division. For one, I need to get past him before anything. But being able to, you know, as far as long-term plans, everybody thinks long-term, right? So I'm... Uh, as far as what's written down on some goals of mine is to, to clear out the entire featherweight division, make sure any of the up and coming contenders, uh, without a question, I am the featherweight king. Um, I've also thought about moving uh, up in class, weight class, and, and looking at the lightweight division. Um, and then also, obviously, inter-promotion uh, champions fighting would be an amazing thing to try to create. Risen and... Bellator, the UFC, um, all obviously great, great champions in each of those divisions, but um, would be phenomenal to try to get together and, and see, you know, how we can uh, kind of like how uh, boxing does things and they have unified champs and go from organization to organization. That would, that would be awesome to be able to, to kind of see how that plays out. Uh, Tan, uh, Martin Nguyen uh, was uh, our uh, guest the last week what do you think about this guy uh, about martin i think uh, i think he's a great champion i think he's a great fighter well-rounded powerful smart uh has a great team behind him um trains under henry oof uh phenomenal coach um so his his track rec record speaks for itself he's, he's a great fighter he's done great things he's done great things for the sport um holds himself as a champion uh, and i think he does it the right way so Um, I'd love to be able to take that belt from him um, and then continue on with, with what he's done as far as being a, a dominant champion and a figure in martial arts that is somebody to, to respect and somebody who can, in, you know, inspire these young guys to, to really reach for the top and, and make it. And, um, you know, that's all I'm looking to do as well. Hey, Tan, the final question. What are your plans for the future? Well, we've kind of touched on that, right? I want to make sure I take this belt from Martin. Um, I want to clear out the featherweight division. Any of those top contenders in the top 10, I want to clear those guys out and defeat those guys. Um, next on the list, take a look at the lightweight division. Next on the list after that, maybe we can start looking at um, prom cross-promotion fights. I think that's a good long-term plan schedule for me. Uh, Tan, thanks for your time. It was an honor to talk with you. Uh, do you have something to say to your fans? I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much for the support. You guys have been amazing. I think it's, uh, you know, I still think it's kind of crazy that I even have fans, but I'm very grateful for them and great, very grateful for you guys to, to continue watching. And, and I hope you enjoy the shows that we put on. Um, you know, stay safe out there. Mm -hmm. Make sure we're doing what we need to do to keep this world the way we want to make it. Thank you guys very much.
Thank you. See you next time, uh, Tan. Thank you for having me.